Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's a Lit Life with Mandarees and today we're going to talk about how to use the Goodreads app. To sum up what Goodreads is, it's a bookish social media. So people talk about what kind of books they want to read, what books they're currently reading, and what books they've already read. It's a great way to connect with people who love the books that you love. It's a great way to find groups of people who are interested in what you're interested and it's just like a very fun, chill social media. So I've already done one video about how to use Goodreads, the website. So I talked about how to make an account, how to write a review, how to make friends, and how to grow your account. And I'll link that video up there. But today, what I want to talk about is how to use the Goodreads app. Because while the app and the website both cover the same bookish social media, the user experience for those is very, very different. Let's get to it. The first step, obviously, is to download the Goodreads app from the App Store. So once you have it downloaded, you would just have to sign in or create an account. You can connect via your Facebook, your Amazon, or your email. And I'm just going to sign in with my Miranda Reads Goodreads account. On the upper left is the search bar, and that's used for looking up books. You can find a book through the author, the title, the ISBN, etc. To the right of that is a little camera icon. One cool thing about the Goodreads app is that you can literally use your camera on your phone to find a book. Click on the camera icon, that'll connect with your phone, and then a camera window will open up. You can scan a cover of one of your books, and then from there Goodreads will search through all of the books in its database and bring up a few covers that might be the one that you have. From there, you can click on that and find your book that way. So let's just look up a book real fast. I know that one that I've been meaning to add to my account is The Four Winds. When you pull up a book on this page, we got the title, below that is the author. If you click on the author's name, it'll pull up information. If they are a Goodreads author, they have that means that they have an account on Goodreads, which they can add books, they can talk about books, they can post blog posts, etc. on their page. It's also a fun way you can see what other books this author has written. Below that tells you the starred rating and whether or not people have read it. And after that is your interaction with the book. Now Goodreads categorizes books as shelves. And it's kind of a virtual shelf and you can either mark a book as something that you want to read, that you're currently reading, or that you've already read it. I have not read The Four Winds yet, so I have marked this one as want to read. Once you settle on the shelf, you can rate it, which means that you give it one to five stars, one being the worst, five being amazing, and you can write a little review. Now, personally, I prefer to write my reviews on the laptop. I just feel like it's a little bit easier for me because I tend to write longer reviews and include pictures and quotes. But if you want to, you can also write it on the Goodreads app. Below that is links if you want to buy the book. You can buy it on Amazon or other stores. And after that comes the book's description, which is a little blurb about what this book is about. From there you can see whether or not your friends enjoyed the book. Now if you click on the bell icon, that's going to bring up your notification center. There are three types of notifications that you can have. There's the regular notifications, so that's if someone has liked your review, commented on your review, suggested a book, etc. The second one is messages. You can send a private message on Goodreads to actually authors or friends or random people, but that also slightly depends on your settings and how public or private your account is. From there is requests. So those are friend requests, people who want to be your friend on Goodreads. So once we're done the notifications, we can click on the bottom left icon, which looks like a home button. And that brings us back to where we were, the home. Now the home is like your home page, and that's where you see what other people think about books. Now what appears on that page are people who you are friends with or you are following. So people who you want to hear their opinions on books. And if you scroll down, it's going to be an endless feed. So whenever you get to the bottom, you'll just have more people's opinions on books as the page refreshes. A lot of the times it's a great way to figure out what your next read is, because if your friends on Goodreads like it and you trust their taste, then odds are you would like that book too. Then to the right of the home page is the My Books tab. If you click on My Books, that brings up books associated with your account we have the reading challenge. Now the reading challenge is something that Goodreads does for the fun of it. Essentially, you just pledge to read X amount of books in the year. I pledged to do 280 and I am roughly 35% of the way towards that goal. 
Now, if you want to edit your goal, all you have to do is click on it, and then from there you can click Edit Goal. One nice thing about Goodreads is that it keeps track of the books for this on its own, meaning that all you have to do is mark a book as read, and it'll count it towards your reading challenge for the 2021 year. If we go back to the main page of my books, now you can see those shelves that we were talking about earlier. So I have my read books, my currently reading, and my want to reads. And that book, The Four Winds, that we added earlier is now under want to read. So for Goodreads, we have the three main shelves, but you could also tag a book as a specific category. Now tags are kind of like book shelves in the sense that you can mark a book as a having a specific take. So what I like to do is if I have my literary cookbooks, I will mark that one with a tag that says literary cookbook. So if I click on that tag later on, that'll pull up a list of all of the books that I've marked as a literary cookbook. It's a really fun and easy way to help categorize books. And when you have 1500 books, it's nice to have that little way to help sort them. And then below that is your reading activity. Now, one nice thing is that you can connect your Kindle to your Goodreads account. So if you're reading a book on Kindle, you can highlight parts of the text and it'll go to your Goodreads account and you can look at those quotes there. I've done a few highlights for books that I've recently read and it's pretty helpful when I'm pulling quotes to write a review. Below that is the reading challenge, which we've already talked about. Then there's your year in books. This is separate from the challenge. The challenge is what's happening in the current year. The year in books is what happened last year. And it's a way just to kind of keep track of what books you read all in one place. And I, it's just a fun way to kind of take a trip down memory lane and look at what you've read. So last year I read 399 books, there's over 100,000 pages. And you have your shortest book, your longest book, what was your book length on average, your most popular, your least popular, your rating, and then from there, it's just all the books that you read that year. And then from there, there's something that says edit your favorite genres. So you'd want to have your favorite genres align with what you like to read. So that way, when Goodreads suggests books or suggests articles towards you, it's more tailored to things that you're interested in. Like I like children's books, cookbooks, fantasy, fiction, horror, thriller and young adult. I'm not a big poetry person, so I wouldn't mark that as one of my genres. Then from there, you can actually see what kind of books would they suggest. Like for children's, it's recommending Charlotte's Web, cookbooks, Amy Sedaris's, I Like You, and so on. Finally, they have add your Amazon books. So these are books that you've bought on Amazon that you may not have read or added to your Goodreads yet. To the right of that is the Discover, and this is where you can check out articles about books. And what makes this different from the Home is that the Discover is more general. The Home page talks is just what your friends are reading. The Discover page has articles. So there's news and interviews, which is bookish news, like what books are coming out, what people are thinking about them, and there's interviews often with famous authors or brand new authors, etc. And it's really always something new. So it's kind of a fun way to get ideas on what you want to read next. So then we have lists and lists are literally lists. <laughs> they are user created around a specific genre or topic. So there'd be like, you know, the best books in the world, best books of 2021, YA fiction, LGBTQ plus YA fiction, that sort of stuff. And users can add books and vote to see which one is the most popular. Next to Discover is another search button. So the search button is a little bit different from the search bar. The search bar is strictly title, author, ISBN. The search button is more genre specific. So it's like if you don't know what you want to read, but you know what category you want to read. So if I know I want to read a fiction book, but I don't know what one, I can click on that and see what Goodreads has for suggestions. So the first one is new fiction by authors you have read, which is actually kind of a cool way to say like, hey, I know I like this person, here's what else they've written. Then there's new releases in general, which kind of broadens your playing field a little bit. Suggestion for tags so other books that are in somewhat related categories. And then from there we have popular and then also the ones that are most read. So popular means just like of the entire world, this is one of the most popular fiction books out there. Most read this week means that this is a book that has a sudden jump in popularity 
that could be like a new release or a rediscovered classic. From there, there are popular quotes if you want to just browse bookish quotes because sometimes I do. And from there, we can go back to the lists we were talking about earlier. And the last aspect of this is the more button. The more will bring up nine other <laughs> options. So the first one is your profile and that is just your account on this site. So it has your name, how many books you've added. I've actually reviewed 1500, but if you added a book as a want to read, it counts it as one of your books on the app. How many friends you have. Then you can edit your settings. So that's kind of where you mess around with like how many notifications you get. Do you want to make your account public or private? Do you want to edit your information? That sort of stuff. Below that is a little profile blurb where you talk about like your rating system or what books you like. Then you can click on your year in books if you want to check that out again. So then from there is your currently reading. So those are all the books that you have marked as currently reading. From there you have your friends, your followers, you have the people who you are following, and you have groups. I'll get to groups in a second. And then from there you have updates. So those are books that you've recently written a review for or you've read and you've posted it to your main account page. And this is another endless scroll thing. Then we have the friends and followers tab. On the left hand side are the friends. So these are people who you've added as a friend and they have added you back. Friendships are mutual ads. Next is following. So that is people that you are following. When you follow someone, you just get notifications on what they're doing. I tend to use that for authors that I'm like interested in their next book. And Goodreads will also suggest readers who have somewhat popular accounts that you might want to follow as well. And then from there is your followers. So these are people who are following you. Going back to that more tab, we have Goodreads groups. Now a Goodreads group is a group of people around a theme. So there's, you know, like there's beta reading, there's author groups, there's indie author, self-published author, there's book clubs, there's people who love romance, people who love a specific author. Essentially, if there is something bookish out there, there is a Goodreads group for it. I used to be in a few book club groups, but then I kind of started running out of time to participate in those. So right now I'm more of a lurker on the groups rather than an active participant. From there, you can quickly jump to your reading challenge and see how that's doing if it's something that you like. And then you can also check out recommendations for you. And these are books that Goodreads thinks that you'll like based off of books that you've already read. And then from there, you can click on the best books of 2020. So every year Goodreads does this thing called the Goodreads Choice Awards where the users get to vote on their favorite books of the year. And those results get made public and you can check it out throughout the year afterwards. I like to use that one when I'm trying to find a book that I just, I don't know what I want to read next. Sometimes I'll go to the Goodreads Choice Awards and just kind of scroll around until I find something that sounds interesting to me. And then we have settings, which allows you to edit like kind of how you interact with the app a little bit. And last but not least is the help page. If you've run into problems, that is where to go. So there we go. That is my intro to the Goodreads app. As always, thank you so, so much for watching and happy reading. Bye.